All right, you guys, so I'm just gonna be spending the time going through some trades I took today. Um, and basically, the goal for today is I'm really just gonna open the kimono here and show you my strategy for real, for real. Um, I'm not gonna explain like kind of the thinking behind everything, but I'm gonna basically take you through the nine steps that I go through um, to determine if I'm gonna take an entry, right? Nine could sound like a lot, could sound like a little, depending on the type of trader you are. Um, but I think when you see the steps themselves, you realize it's a very, very simple, very simple strategy. So let's start out here on the weekly. Sorry. Start out here on the weekly. So I'm looking at the weekly on your USD. I can see that most recently, have we violated a swing high or swing low? Most recently, we violated a swing high. I mean, a swing low. Jesus. A swing low, right? Most recent thing we did was violate this swing low. Although we pulled above this candle's high, this candle high was not a swing high. This is now a swing high, okay? But the way that this day shaped up, this is now a swing high. We could definitely run above that, and then that would be a different story. Now the most recent high that we've run above is a swing high. I mean, now the most recent swing that we've run above is a swing high, right? But in this case right now, what we're looking at is the most recent thing that we've done is we've formed, is we've run below a swing low, okay? Daily, it's the same thing, but again, it's just the most recent one, right? So here, you see that swing low, but I don't care about the swing low anymore when I get down to the daily, right? So once we get down to the daily, we have this swing low, we have this swing high, which you see that we run out here, right? But what we also have is we have this swing low right in here that we ran out with this green candle, and from that point, I was looking to sell again, okay? So now, from that point, I'm looking to sell again. What I do is I go to the one minute, you know, very simply. So here's a big thing that I've been focusing on in my strategy, and that's literally the time of day in the market that I'm trading. So you see here on this box and then this gray line here, representing what's basically called, um, you know, so you're gonna see basically from the structural part of my strategy, a lot of what are called, or what, you know, his, his channel is called ICT. His name is Michael, whatever the fuck, Huddleston, I think. Yeah, but his channel is called ICT, right? And you just see a lot of his concepts because his, you know, I've said this before, but his structural concepts kind of agreed um, and kind of made a lot of concepts that I understood before a bit more accurate. I said before, I think that the mentor I used before really just used ICTs like earlier mentorship and then kind of just took it and tried to sell it in a more less refined way, but I digress. So at this point, um, right, you can see this box here and this gray line. So that represents a time in the day where, you know, basically recommends that the market is more active. And so essentially what I've gone in and done is I've tested essentially only trading from seven to um, whatever, what is it? I can never think of the exact time. Um, London close is 1300, so 1 p.m. here in Atlanta, okay? So from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m., that is my trading hours. Okay, so we are now in 7 a.m., okay? Now we have run above these highs, okay? So that's first things first, is we need to run above some highs, okay? Now, what's nice about this trade was I was, so here's something I'm also trying to change in my trading is not back testing before I trade. I've been doing it as of recent just to try to get some back testing out of the way that I want to get done. Um, but, you know, when I go forward, when I'm done that type of back, when I'm done that back testing that I had goals to get done, like I just need to get it done, I need to get it out of the way. My goal is to not back test before I trade because I found that it makes me anxious to take, like it makes me more giddy and more like I have to find an opportunity, right? But kind of, I was feeling that and I saw this setup here, right? And we pushed above that. But I told myself, it's not a real high. And as I stepped back and looked at it again, well, yes, it is, it would likely be a high on a lower time frame, like a tick chart. On the time frame that I'm trading, the one minute, I'm not going any lower. So that's what I care about, right? This is not a high. Like there is a, a brief intermediate high right there. You know, probably another one there as well. But that's not really highs, okay? So once we got past this, I started to look for possible opportunities, okay? But as we push down here 
and broke below the swing low because that's the next thing I'm looking for. Since I'm trying to sell, I want to see it break below the swing low. We didn't get a fair value gap. I'm not going to teach you what a fair value gap is, not because I don't, you know, want to hide anything or anything like that, but it would just be better if you just go out and look at ICT stuff to understand what a fair value gap is because he's going to explain it way better than I am. So, here, when we broke this low, we didn't get a fair value gap. Here, when we broke this low, we did get a fair value gap, okay? But I don't just enter on the first break of market structure. I enter on essentially the second break of market structure, right, which is breaking below the low or breaking above the swing high, right? Um, you know, there's more to a break of market structure than just breaking below or breaking below the swing high. But again, I can explain those things. If you want to learn it, go to his YouTube channel. The shit is free. So here we got a break below, a swing low here, as well as here we got a swing low. So really count this one, okay? And we get a break below a swing low with a fair value gap in there, okay? Then we got to push up into that fair value gap, and then we broke below a swing low again here, all right? And then we established another fair value gap, okay? And then with that, what I did is, so this one was a bit unnecessary to do this, but the next trade was definitely more necessary to do this. So what I did was, and here's where I kind of start to divert from ICT, is I used the volume profile. Um, and then I wouldn't say I divert from them using the FIB, but I, I kind of just use it in a different way. Um, so first I throw in this volume profile and I you know measure the swing that broke that low. Okay. And I look at the point of control. All right, since I'm trying to sell, I want to get above the point of control um, with whatever candle or order block I'm using to enter into the market at that time. All right. Um, and so that being said, that was basically here. All right. And so I essentially just entered here. But you know, I, put, I was going to place my entry here. But since this is the one minute, I wasn't able to actually get the entry on until here. So I ended up just using a market order, but I don't really care because I ended up just getting, you know, a better entry. But, you know, this is one of those cases where it's not that I got distracted, but you can see here that we broke it and then immediately went back into it. So I was like literally trying to get the order on and, you know, it, it started moving back into it. So me placing a limit order made absolutely no sense. So I was like, okay, I'll just do some market order. So I was waiting until I got the market order in. You know, got everything sized up, right? Because that thing sized up before, but still want to check it before I actually hit send. Okay, and this is where my stop was. So we can see here, right, on both sides, we have the high here and here, and the high here, right? So I did that to myself. Okay, well, first target is one, negative one. If I need it to 1.2, if not, I try 1.5, and if I can't get it on 1.5, then I just leave it alone. Okay which I actually had a situation like that um, today. So go over that as well. So here is the entry, all right? So, oh, last part as well. Nice part, nice added confluence. This doesn't have to happen for me to take a trade, but I love to see it when it does, when I do take a trade, is this break below this EMA. Right. That was that one, but I actually talked about this trade as well on Instagram because it was pretty interesting. So I currently trade for with the prop firm and like the prop firm account and my own personal account. Um, and so I, you know, using my own personal account, I actually got taken out by this break here, right? So my stop loss was probably more around here for my personal account based on the market order, and then I got taken out of this break, right? So that's really impressive. Awesome. 
Yeah. <laughs> 